All right. So this is the um, comedy diary number two, I guess. Um, I'm sorry for not doing it daily. Uh, there's just really not much to report on at the moment other than maybe talking a little bit about the decision to pursue it, which I think it's, it's interesting actually, because it has unpacked a lot of stuff for me, um, which I think is different when you're a bit older, right? Um, there's something about risky life decisions where I think if you've had businesses fail or you've had marriages fail, or you've had all these things, it's part of you that knows you're going to be fine if you fail, right? Um, and that's always how I've lived, right? It's, you know, go in, you don't know what's going to happen. You do your best. Uh, you, you may or may not succeed and you just, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off. If you go through enough of that, like I have, like I've <laughs> A disproportionate amount of picking myself up off the floor, right? Figuratively and literally. Um, um, I thought that this would be the same. And it, it, again, it's very difficult to unpack what, unpack what is fear and what is actually uh, my voice of experience telling me to do or not do something, right? It, it's very, it, it, it's, um, it's been tricky um, because especially when you are going through material like I am and um basically I have gone through and I, I, okay so what happened was I realized I've got lots of good material right I've good good millions of words thousands of jokes hundreds of potential good good jokes good material right there's good ideas I'm not short of ideas and um I thought okay well let's work on the actual structure of the joke don't go in arrogantly, uh, you, you know, you can't just bum luck your way through this stuff, Tay. You've actually got to take this seriously. So if you're going to take it seriously, take it seriously. So what I've done is uh, go gone and learned a bunch of theory about how to structure jokes and the best way to structure a bit, you know, how to pull an act together, how to get your five minutes, all that sort of stuff. Now, a big part of this is my perfectionism and... Um, and anxiety, right? So when I'm anxious, I will go into theory and I will sort of try to rationalize everything. Okay. Obviously I know that this is just 50% fear. Okay. Which is that I'm finding busy work to avoid getting on stage and doing what I need to do. That said, I also go into everything properly. Like I make sure that I uh, don't go in a half assed uh, when I decide to do something, I make sure that I do it well and I make sure that I don't squander opportunities. Okay. Um, and I think that th there's two, there's two opposing <laughs> benefits, downsides, whatever you think to, uh, life experience, which is that, um, I've got enough life experience and have failed enough times to know that should I fail, it'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll get over it you know, I'll pick up, dust myself off, move on. Okay. But another part of me is like, well, how many times do you need to fail <laughs> before something sticks? Right. And I, again, I wouldn't say that overall I'm, um, a failure. Like I, I you know, I, I, on paper, I'm definitely not like there's no, I'm, I'm not right. Uh, these are all internal feelings, but there is a part of me that's like, you know, at 45, you've got to settle down. You've got to stop being so reckless. You've got to do all of these things. You've got responsibilities. I mean, that said, I said that when I was in my 20s and look where it got me. I, I All I've done is responsible stuff, right? It might not look that way, but it's, all I've ever done is the responsible thing and somehow, you know, managed to say relatively, re stay relatively sane despite every impulse to the contrary. Um, but I have, you know, I've made impulsive decisions and it has been really interesting because stand up comedy for me definitely represents, um, sort of the pinnacle of what I could have been. And the idea that it might actually still be an option. Um, it's been a strange emotional experience. Um, now part of it is just, again, fear, ADHD, um, impost, you know, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, sort of coming up against 
technique, structure, learning curves, realizing that, you know, I've got to get comfortable with a stage. I've got to learn stagecraft. I've got to learn how to act. I've got to, to do it well. You've got to learn how to do things that I don't know how to do very well. And so for me, it's like, oh, there's a learning curve here. Now, obviously still like law school, whatever. Okay, easy. Um, but, and at the end of the day, like a lot of the skills do dovetail each other, right? If I'm going to go to court, I've got to be able to speak in public. If I'm going to have a certain way of thinking and structure, that's, that's, they're the same. I've said that before that there's like an overlap between a lot of these things. But if I'm going to be pursuing stand up, and that's not even like going on tour, but it is like, it's a lot of late nights. It's changing my sleep schedule. There's a lot of stuff, right? Being around uh, people who are drinking, um, you know, the financial cost, obviously it's not free to go to open mics. And I realized that was another thing that I kind of realized. It's like, it does seem a little bit indulgent to be, uh, you know, like every week there's one for $10, but uh, there's 10 comics for 10 and then there's another one that's like $25, another one that's $50 and that's not with drinks or anything. So I'm spending quite a bit of money per week just to go to op open mics, right? So I've got to, when I do go, I've got to take it seriously. And that's what I, um, I sort of, it gave me pause. As soon as I decided, dickhead that I am, decided to announce to everyone that I was going to pursue this thing, um, you know, I started to have doubts about it and I started to go, you know, is this what I want? Is this something where just caught in the afterglow of big, of getting a compliment from somebody and it's like, okay, someone, you know, off, offering me to, to, offering to help and all that sort of stuff. Okay. And I had to do sort of a little thought experiment, which was if not for that, would I want to pursue this? And it's something I've always wanted to do. Okay. It's something I've, I've always thought I could do, but I'd always decided, you know, I always just thought I couldn't, right? I, I shouldn't, I, I'm in the wrong place. You can only have one lifetime. And it was just one of those things that I'd, um, never thought was possible. Okay. For me to pursue, I'm just in the wrong place. All these things, time's passed, time to grow up, et cetera, et cetera. But then if someone says, you know what, I think you can do this if with a little bit of work and refinement and and training and structure and all of the sort of theory stuff that I've been diving into this last um, week or so. Um, again, I, I've read it all before, but I'm like actually taking it seriously now, doing the exercises rather than just reading about them, right? Um, taking it actually seriously. Um, you know, and, and, and it's like, could I do this? Can I not do this? Feeling like, especially when I get when it's not working and I'm not, again, some of it takes practice. It just takes practice and you get better at it with every go. But realizing that a lot of my material, while it's still, it's probably a, a five minutes that it would be in the top, it'd be in the top 50%, nowhere near um, top 20% at all, even close for open mics, right? It's not, I don't think it's ready don't think any of it is ready. And I also don't think like structurally in terms of a joke, like I did one thing I have observed from going to a lot of open mics is that people do just show up and talk and they haven't, they don't really work on the structure of their jokes. They don't work on their punchline. You know, they don't work on their setups. They don't actually do the sort of deep work, um, in writing the jokes to begin with. And they, they just think of a story or a brain fart or an idea. And they think that that translates to stage, which it doesn't. If you're thinking about it seriously, it doesn't. Um, most, no, no comic who is worth their salt doesn't write. Okay. Uh, some write on stage, fair enough, but they still write. Okay. Um, and practice and refine. I have realized that I really don't feel comfortable going up on stage with unfinished jokes. Okay. Now there might be, okay, hang on, let me qualify that maybe unfinished as in unpolished. Yes. You can't really test a joke until you go on stage, but at the same time, I'm not going to just brain fart on stage either. I do want to have some sense of what I'm going to say, uh, actually have set up some punchlines and, uh, it, you know, actually do the technical part of 
joke writing. Okay. Now I know this isn't very funny. This is the reality of what it means to, um, uh, pursue this type of thing. I know it's funny. It's like, the, it's the least funny process in the world. Like anything it create, it takes discipline. But again, there's also things like performance and how, how you hold yourself on stage. Now, again, a lot of this comes with time, but like some of this stuff is just, uh, you, very quickly when you decide that you're going to go and do something, okay. Whether it's a business or whether it's, um, in this case, it's stand up. It, but you, you know, there's lots of things where if you're actually serious, you have to do, um, I think that that's the difference between being in your twenties and being in your forties is that when you're in your forties, you actually have to think about it. You actually have to think about, uh, what you're doing, uh, whether it's worth it. You do have to do a cost benefit. You have to figure out like whether it's worth pursuing. Um, you know, you can't just sort of go out in your twenties like you would in your twenties and go, Oh, well, I'm funny on stage. Let's fail for 10 years and then make it. It's like, well, no, when you're 45, you've got to uh, plan and you've got to make sure that you're not being selfish and you've got to make sure that you, you know, you, your time becomes a lot more valuable as you get older. Okay. Um, and that's sort of what I've been going through at the moment, which is that, uh, there's been a lot of doubts, but also just, um, just a lot of, um, it's, it's, okay. Not so much doubts because I don't think there's really any doubt. I've made the decision. Okay. Um, but it is a lot of stuff about the industry itself, where every time I touch the, a, a, a good portion, I'm remembering how what it was like to work in the entertainment industry before and the personalities that you've got to work with. And there's a big part of it that's like, oh, do I want to deal with that bullshit? Like of egos, of you know, tantrums of fucking everyone projecting their anxieties onto you. Um, the, the clickiness, which I've talked about the, um, competitiveness, right. And it's like, every time I sit and I do, you know, I read these Facebook groups and I read the comedy groups and all that sort of stuff. And, um, like, I, I don't know, like, uh, whether, you know, how it's like you spend a lot of time get trying to get away from the bullshit and it's not so much the craft and I'm not dissing anybody like anyone who decides to do this I you know I'm you, you, it's it's fine but at the same time just again this might also just be online like people are generally nicer offline but you read these Facebook groups and you read these things and you read Reddit and all those things with like comedians and um it's just childish like there's a lot of again, the people that pursue these types of things, there's going to be people who are not like this, right? But you got to, uh, part of me has been thinking about like whether I'd need this bullshit in my life, you know, the drama, like people and egos and fucking all that sort of stuff, right? And um, so if I'm going to do it well, it means that if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it well and properly, okay? which means that if I take it seriously and do it properly, it means I'm probably going to fast track into a position where I'm a target for those who are sort of not getting there, lazy, whatever. That's a Perth thing. Again, I'm not saying that's an inevitability, but I'm saying I know me well enough to know that I will put in the work and do get the result. Like that's once I've just, yeah, it's, it's not an issue. Right. Um, I have a lot going for me in that regard. I can't see how I would be stuck in open mics for very long, but then you risk run the risk of being torn down, gossiped about, you know, all of those sorts of things. That's like, oh, I've spent so many years trying to avoid that shit. <laughs> you know, anyway, I know I'm sort of rambling here, but it was just, I thought, okay, I better do a quick one, quick journal entry. Cause I did promise to do them daily. I'm just going to try and aim for two, maybe three times a week. That's as much as I can do. Um, I, uh, it's tricky. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just really tired. And also when I'm in, I'm in that mode where I'm writing and I'm fixing and I'm refining and that requires a level of obsession because I am intensively focused on getting my act ready. First of all, so I can get to the open mics as quickly as possible and perform my stuff. I have, I do have quite a few 
solid bits. I've just got to bring them together properly and practice them and practice them and practice them. Okay. Um, but I've also figured out that like my jokes are great, but they're not, they're not, they're good jokes, but they're written in the form of jokes. And I'd prefer to be able to perform the comedy. It's they're different, very different things. So I'm just pushing myself a little harder to um, be better at sort of point of view, uh, all that sort of stuff, right? That stage and performance kind of thing. So I'm just taking a little more time, but not too much time. There's a balance between procrastination based on fear and taking it seriously and taking the time and giving it the time it needs. Um, now I have set a deadline for the open mics for you know, I set it for my 45th birthday, which is two weeks from now. I don't think I'm going to make it, but it will be within the weeks. Okay. I won't be sharing that because it's going to be shit. Uh, but it, uh, it, I will, um, I'll report back once I'm there. Like I, I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm working on it, right? It won't be any longer than say six to eight weeks, um, before I am ready. Okay. It just depends. That said, I've got uni going back in May. So I want to go before then. So I want to be, you know, I've got to get my, all my, cause I, once uni goes back, I end up being a bit cactus. So, uh, I just, um, want to be ready with an act prepared so that once uni starts, all I need to do then is practice and practice. And I can go to the open mics without, um, writing or doing anything else. I can obviously be refining and that sort of stuff, but, um, you know, so what I've got to do is get that sort of tight, clean five minutes, um, ready in the next couple of weeks. And I've been very focused on that. I thought that I was further ahead than I was, but once I started to look at, um, uh, structure and I'll talk about some of the stuff that I've learned maybe, uh, in, I won't say tomorrow, tomorrow relative means next, next time. Uh, I might talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, what I've learned in terms of why and how th the things are structured, why they don't work or don't work. One of the things that I know that I'm very guilty of is writing past the punch um, and, uh, and, and killing the laugh that I would have gotten and also, um, you know, just sort of set up and punchline. Like I've got an intuitive sense for that kind of thing, um, but uh, there have been some technical things that I've realized why I'm not quite not quite smashing it, not just with comedy and comedy writing, but just in terms of the way that I pace my writing. Uh, it has been really, really useful to um, learn how uh, stand-up works purely because getting a laugh is one of the hardest things to do uh, consistently every time to a bunch of strangers. It's a lot harder than you'd think. Like there is being funny. Like I can be funny and rant and do whatever the fuck on a stream, but it's not the same. It's not the same thing. It is actually a craft and it is something that um, – if I put in some of the effort in the technical stuff, okay, and refine, I was arrogant enough to think that, you know, you know how it is. It's like, I thought, oh yeah, I'm funny. And then you get hit over the fucking head with a sack full of fucking, you know, whatever. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm not so great. I'm going to embarrass myself, but also watching other, other open micers crash and burn and, uh, and why they do that and watching why jokes don't land. The interesting thing is watching how jokes bomb and why they don't land. You can learn just as much. Uh, and I have found that really interesting is watching. Um, oh, I've really gotten into Stuart Lee lately. I, I can't believe I wasn't a Stuart Lee fan before. I think I watched, um, tried to watch Carpet Remnant World back when it was first out and everyone was talking about Stuart Lee and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But obviously since then I've become more of a, um, my, my comedy palette has become a little more sophisticated over the years and I can't believe I never watched him before. It's like, he's amazing. And I would model myself on sort of more that kind of uh, Stuart Lee, uh, maybe Dylan Moran, Eddie Izzard, that kind of, you know, like that sort of slightly more, um, you know, like it doesn't, I'm not going to do fucking like, let's just say I'm not going to be doing fart jokes. That said, my style of comedy is not something that I need to worry about just yet. Uh, what I need to do is get a type five for an open mic audience of strangers in Perth at a pub. And so I'm really focused on that, getting good at storytelling. One thing that you'll know from 
various things over, the, over is that I tend to drift off. I tend to tend to um, bundle in too many topics at once rather than um, uh, you know, again, I, I understand now somewhat where my writing needs improvement, which is that I need to be, um, it's not a matter of wit or my writing talent or anything. It is structural and it is um, keeping it simple and not overthinking it. And, um, you know, yeah, again, it's really helped my writing just to learn how jokes work and pacing. Okay. Um, and um, it's not, I'm not afraid to admit that. Uh, I realized that my writing is not as up to par as I thought it was. I mean, obviously it's, it's still pretty good. It's above average, right? But I'm not, but there are, there's so much room for improvement. And I like, if anything, even if I never become anything, um, just taking the comedy writing course and taking it seriously and dedicating that time will make me a better storyteller, will make me a better writer and a better speaker. So, you know, um, <sighs> Let's just go for, let's just look at it that way. I've had the option of like looking at an improv class, but like, yeah, not yet. Improv people. I, I'm not a fan of people who are too enthusiastic or extroverted or whatever. Um, that's not really my style, but um, I do get a little cringy at the sort of over the top. I'm a comedian. It's like, no, but um, again, another thing, these are all schools of thought, right? But one thing I did learn about, uh, comedy is that you show you don't tell and you um you don't necessarily have to be um literally going ha ha just kidding guys and I think that's one thing that a lot of comics do rather than going in and being straight and letting the material and just acting the straight man and showing like pretend uh, one of the th most powerful things is when you can go on stage and say funny things and not un, not really necessarily have to tell them it's a joke. It is just something that you perform and you do um, in a way that is, you know, you're either a straight man or you're sort of a bit clueless or uh, you are just telling a story that has a punch and you know that it's a punchline, but you don't go going, ha ha, get the joke, get the joke. There's a lot of people, I've no, again, I've noticed that at open mics where, um, and again, some of this is like, a matter of experience. Okay. I haven't done it yet, but I do know I'm a fan of comedy. I've consumed it for years. I know comics. I, you know, I, there's some things that I do know. Okay. I'm not saying I know everything, but there are some things that I've observed. It's probably easier, easier said than done. Cause a lot of it involves like acting skills and speaking skills. Most of the barriers to doing stand up are in here. It's not, it's not necessarily a skills issue. It's fucking up here. It's like, can I get on stage? Can I not have my knee shake? Can I, am I not, just don't let the nerves kill you. Okay. That's the thing that like seems to be the thing with me. It's like, it's not a matter of knowing what to do. It's a matter of doing it and a matter of overcoming all of the fucking mental shit that goes in your head. That's my big battle. And that's why I've been a little bit like, um, because obviously it shakes your confidence a little bit when you realize you're not as fucking great as you think you are. And so I imagine that I'll be knocked down a peg at every open mic for the next few years and you know you get beaten and beaten and beaten and that's okay um but i do know that um a lot of it is the delivery and the what and my kind of comedy i'm just not going to be a yuck yuck fucking kind of comedian okay i'm a bit more it's just not my style like and it is funny because there are people especially here who um if you go to the open mics here you'll confuse extroversion and yelling and talking loudly for being a comedian and having jokes <laughs> like and saying saying the word pedophile a lot that seems to be a thing at the moment when I've, it seems to be a theme which is that people confuse edginess and being ha, hi guys extra and roasting and being mean to people for comedy and so i want to again different style some people find bullying hilarious i don't okay um, like I don't find engaging with hecklers terribly fun. Like I don't think I, th I find them rude, but you can incorporate that into your act. Okay. So there's ways to incorporate who you are into your act and you have permission to be yourself. So, um, I will just figure out a way to be like a teacher dealing with fucking students and just roast them. Okay. But I won't, I won't reward them with it, but I will just figure out a way to set a firm boundary and uh, say, no, 
shut the fuck up and because female comics get heckled a lot more obviously as well so um, but anyway I've got, I've wandered off on some weird tangent um, I might actually just post the unedited version um, as is because there's nothing really here that I have said that's particularly intimate or not but um, so I'll just upload this and uh, I will do because it's late in the day it's like already nearly five o'clock and I don't have time to edit but I'll so I'll put this up as is and then I will do another one uh what's the day today Tuesday so I'll do another one on Thursday um and um I'll talk a little bit more about um maybe some of the technical stuff uh but one of the things that I found really interesting I know I've got to, I said I'd go but just give me a sec one of the things that I have found interesting about this whole process is that I, I oh that's what I said at the beginning um is that I had to decide that I wanted to do this on my own anyway without so all things being equal, am I, am I, do I want to do this? And should my sort of mentor or should any, any favors that I need to call or anything, should that go away? Do I still want to pursue it? Because, you know, would I still regret not pursuing it in, would I regret not doing it? And the answer is yes. So, um, give it a good go. I know I'm overthinking it and I know that it's, you know, people are, just, it must be extremely frustrating to watch because it's like, just fucking do it. But this obviously just does help because I can, I think people do get something out of seeing, um, some of these things. I think, I know that I've had a lot of people say that they like me just being honest and stuff. And, and I do think there is something to be said for con for, this isn't content. This is just fucking stream of consciousness, but there is something to be said for, um, you know, someone he where I am at 45, a woman, um, you know, going, you know what, I think I'm, I think I can do this, see if I can do it and, um, let's give it a good go because if it's, if I can do it and I can decide to do it, then I think that others can. Uh, and I do think that there is a sort of this bro culture stuff where it's just like, we'll just get up on stage and say your jokes and then, you know, join the Rogan verse and all that sort of stuff. And then you just be good, bro. Let's set up a podcast, bro. And you just do it. And it's like, just hustle your way. And it's like, well, no, some of it, it is okay as an introvert to learn a craft and to learn if, and to be nervous. And it's normal to be nervous about being on stage and still do it anyway and still give it a go. And, you know, I might, I might end up just in the business side. I might end up encouraging other younger talent, right? I might end up working in a different capacity, but I'm just going to pursue it and see how we go. Um, I do obviously have a backup plan with law school and I do still obviously need to make money with consulting. So unless the Patreon grows substantially, I'm going to have to be stretched very thin, but that's okay. It costs money. It li You literally have to pay to do stand up. Um, everything streaming costs me money to do streaming stand up costs me money to do stand up it, it's like okay it's all pay to play now let's just accept that for what it is um but I need to find a way of funding it and making it pay for itself so I'm just working through some of those things working on website stuff <sighs> and writing jokes but most of the thing has been just going balls deep into the technical stuff um learning how to present jokes on stage, especially point of view stuff, uh, learning how to act out stuff rather than just relay a conversation. Or then she said, and I said, and she said, you actually go in and, you know, learning how to act. Uh, a big part of the craft of learning how to do stand up is learning how to act like that on stage. Um, and it will make a massive amount of difference. And now that I've pointed it out, um, now that I pointed it out, Paul notices it too, which is like, the way that you act out conversations and you make sure that, and you bring jokes out of the past and into the present. So, you know, something where you said it was three months ago, you make it yesterday and you make it, to, you know, so I've got a bit, um, of course I do. I don't know whether this is an open mic bit. It's probably a little too dark for open mics because open mics are a different thing. I don't want to be one of those fuckheads that just goes in, thinks that they're like edgy, but I've got a really, really solid bit. Okay, about uh, it's a cancer bit, cancer scares, uh, and um, this idea that I went through a cancer scare some time ago, and I've got obviously that ongoing high risk of having cancer, so I have to have regular cancer screens, and so uh, 
what I would just do is I, you, you, rather than say that, you, you'd set that up as, it doesn't, you know, you can play with the truth in, basically, which is other than literal dumb fucks, okay, um, most people understand that you have to bring things into the present. So it'll be like, well, you know, having these tests this week and the results are back next week because I'm talking more about what where your brain goes when you are awaiting the results and, um, you know, some of those things. And uh, I won't I won't share the joke because it's not ready, but you, it, it's solid, um, and it's quite funny <laughs> and wrong and great. I like it. Um, but um, uh, yeah. So, uh, but Joe's little techniques, those te- uh, apparently they make just such a huge difference. Like two hundred percent, three hundred percent laughs, same joke, but you just change the tense and you act it out with characters like that's how you can just get good really quickly so I'm just taking a little bit longer I've already waited you know 20 years I'm sure I can wait a few more weeks uh, and learning how to do proper actual um, just just the stuff that might take other people a few years to learn I'm going to just learn up front and practice up front and have my own idea of what I'm doing um, I do have a sense of what my voice is because I've been doing streaming for so many years it's roughly this but more exaggerated and probably a bit more subtle but not exaggerated and subtle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um just a slightly more um a different a slightly variation of what this is slightly more together scripted organized practiced whatever the fuck those words (laughs) So anyway, I, I think that I've done now 31 minutes. That's enough. I'm just going to put the unedited one up today. Forgive me. I over, I just over promise. And, you know, I've over, Easter weekend's thrown us all out, um, ADD, and I've just been sitting here trying to fucking just keep my head above water. But I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, but I will be back on Thursday, um, minimum of twice a week. But I'd like to do more than that. But, again, it's just... I'm, I'm doing the best I can. So please be patient with me. Um, the more that, you know, if you, the more that you support me on Patreon, the quicker that I can just make this stuff my job. But at the moment, it's not my job. I can't. Like, every everything goes on rent and bills. We, it's just, it doesn't, there's no fucking anything. Okay, it's just, I know, I know everyone's in the same situation, but like, it's just insane. I never thought that I'd be 45. Like I'm literally at the point where there is no reason not to pursue stand up because there is literally all, all other options don't seem very viable. So why the fuck not? That's a lot of a part of that. A lot of that is it's a big part of my reasoning, which is like, well, I'm doing a law degree and I'm doing the Juris Doctor and uh, I'm going to have to deal with dickhead personalities there. I'm going to have to learn how to talk, you know, in front of people more like better in a succinct way why can't i just do funny shit then just be a comic if you're going to be a lawyer be a comic i mean obviously i'm still doing lawyer but i'm just you know you're going to be treated like shit and talked down to and heckled as a junior lawyer as well so what's the point just do the fucking stand up and shut the fuck up that's my reasoning because it's like well there's no money in anything else either so just do the thing that you enjoy and that might work out and so far following your you will see how we go but either way i'm not an idiot i'll do like i do have a backup plan and i do unfortunately have to keep like um taking on clients i really fucking don't want to but i live in the real world and that's why i think there might be some interesting content here too because i live in the real world what does it actually take in the real world for somebody like me to pursue stand up an introvert it's not something i do naturally but i love it and i'd like to try So come along with me. I love you and I'll be back on Thursday. Thanks so much. (laughs) Bye.